Claris has introduced a new tactical flashlight called the X-T21X, producing 4,000 peak lumens using active thermal controls and a 21700 battery. It's nice to see 21700s start taking off in 2019 as the uh, Olight Seeker 2 Pro also has one. And thanks to Flashlight Z for sending this light to me to take a look at and review. Please make sure to check them out. Just a reminder to everyone to make sure you check out the description for links to my Facebook page, to the channel, and my reviews. And I try to post there a few days a week, letting you know what's coming up and what I'm doing and other kind of pictures, sales, things like that. I've also got a Patreon page that I've set up for the channel with a link in the description to that below. Here is the box that the light comes in. It is this white high quality retail box with a tactical drawn soldier as well as a light. Per the usual, you have lumens and other facts around the box. And then uh, on the back, you have some technical stats and just your normal runtime chart. Most interesting to me here was this intelligent thermal protection system. And we'll get into that here in a minute. Looking at all the different accessories that are included with the light itself, you get a pocket clip on the flashlight itself here, um, a lanyard, O-ring, micro USB charging cable, a button top protected Claris branded 21700 5000 milliamp hour battery, and a branded Claris uh, holster. It's got a plastic D-ring in the back here, Velcro, kind of what you're used to. Construction, this light is made from aircraft grade aluminum and is hard anodized and it's a fairly uh, glossy flat black. Starting at the back of the light here, you can see we've got two switches. We've got a mechanical on off and then a paddle. There's not really any grip on the tail section here um, and it's pretty similar to other recent uh, Claris lights we've seen, the ST15R. Taking a look at the tail cap itself, you've got a really strong dual springs inside there. Here is the battery that it comes with. Like I said, it's a mentioned, it's a Claris uh, branded uh, 21700 battery. It is protected, 5000 milliamp hours. Pretty standard stuff there. At the uh, back of the light, you can see the Acme cut threads. And inside it's a dual tube design that we've seen with uh, other brands that are running a side switch as well as a uh, rear switch. The clip here only fits on in one position. Um, it does rotate though. It doesn't fit on in reverse if you'd like to do that. The uh, body here is got the knurling that uh, the ST15R does, but then it's got a diamond-like pattern milled into it or a triangle maybe you'd say. Um, this, I like this type of grip. It's something different. I think it looks really nice. Um, it does tend to pick up dirt and stuff from your hands easily. And it doesn't provide it provides enough traction, I guess, on a uh, tactical light without ripping up your pockets or your hands. So it's kind of a compromise that is a good fit. The head itself here is similar in layout to other new Claris lights this year that I've seen. You've got the same electronic button that's, that I really liked on the S15R, although the uh, illumination around this one doesn't seem to be quite as nice, um, not, maybe not quite as even. Opposite the button, you've got a very similar micro USB charging port uh, with a nice door that fits in there. Um, you've kind of got to work that door, which that's a little bit of a good thing. You've got a little heat sinking here on the sides. And then you take a look at the head. It's uh, a little bit larger and you've got a bezel here. The bezel does unscrew. You can see that we've got a double reflective coated lens on there. A neural deep reflector and the LED there that is nicely centered. I measured the overall length at 162 millimeters, maximum diameter at the head at 41 millimeters and minimum diameter at the body here of 27.5 millimeters. Weight with the pocket clip and battery was 228 grams. Here it is against the dollar bill. You can see it's a fairly long light being just slightly longer than the dollar bill. Um, for me, that fits well in the hand, um, no problems there, but definitely this isn't something I would uh, put in a front pants pocket or something like that. It'd be fine in a jeans pocket. Little comparison with the Olight Seeker 2 Pro, if it'll stay on my table here. Um, the Seeker 2 Pro is pretty much smaller in all dimensions. The lights aren't uh, equal. The, the Olight isn't really designed to be a tactical light necessarily. It has some tactical features, but uh, 
they're different design characteristics, but it's the only other light I have here at the moment. That's a 21700 battery. I did do a review on this. If you're interested, uh, please check out my channel. But uh, you can kind of see what they're like. Head diameter is vastly different. Um, and the Olight's really a flood, and the uh, Claris is more of a thrower. So different uh, objective lights, but you get the idea. So this light is using a Cree XHP 70.2 P2 LED in cool white. No temperature data is given, but it's fairly warm cool white, not uh, almost more of a neutral cool. Um, definitely not warm. And the beam is good. It's got a nice hot spot in the center that'll allow light to throw and a smooth transition to spill uh, with no negative artifacts or rings or anything like that. And for an XHP 70.2, um, it doesn't have that much Cree rainbow that I can see. Runtime on this light was good, but also a little disappointing. The uh, 4,000 lumens of turbo is only good for one minute uncooled because of thermal controls. That said, the light does have active thermal controls that you can see here in the graph of it going up and down a lot. We see it first coming in uh, from the very beginning of the light to running out to that 130 minute lumen, or 130 minute runtime mark where um, the light turns down into a uh, low mode for uh, extended runtime for about another 175 minutes. So when it's doing that active thermal control, you see smooth fades that are anywhere from about 50% to 18% relative output. Um, you do notice it, but it's not like a fast cycle and it's not a hard cutoff, so it blends in nicely. Total runtime from uh, full to empty was 300 minutes. Low voltage protection kicked in at 2.88 volts, and working voltage of this light is 2.5 to 6.4 volts. Parasitic drain was measured at 3.3 microamps, and I measured thermals during my runtime test with a maximum temperature I saw at the five minute mark of 111 degrees Fahrenheit, which uh, is warm, but not uh, hot to the touch. Here are my night shots for the Claris XT21X. And this is a new light from Claris, 21700. It's you're running a Cree XHP 70.2 P2 LED. And you can see here 4,000 lumens. This is the default tactical mode that the light ships in. So this is what I'm gonna demonstrate. I've got the camera adjusted to what my eye sees or as close as I can to that. And as you can see here, the light comes by default in turbo, 4,000 lumens. If I bump down, we go to high of 1200 lumens, medium of 400 lumens, low of 100 lumens. And uh, if I pan down here, it gives a little bit more accurate representation of what low is. And then one more down to, this is moonlight mode, this is five lumens, and does a decent job of showing what it's like on to my eye here. Again, this is another light where five lumens um, is moon, unfortunately. If I double click, I get strobe, and this kind of goes through a fast and slow. Double click again, and I get SOS. Strobe is back at that 4,000 lumens. SOS is 100 lumens. Here we are back at turbo. And here is the Olight uh, Seeker 2 Pro. It's only 3200 lumens, but just a different beam comparison here. We can see it doesn't throw as far as the Claris does. Um, it's a little bit more of a floody beam, whereas the Claris here, it throws a little bit better. It's one single emitter, um, more traditional reflector. There's no real artifacts in the beam. It's got a fairly hard cutoff here, as you can see along the side of the house and the tree there. Nice overall useful beam, I feel like. Here is the Olight again. You can see the cutoff on the Olight isn't as uh, sharp. And we can see tints between the two are fairly close. Here is the Olight Seeker 2 Pro. And here is the Claris again. Overall, it's a pretty nice light, pretty useful beam, I feel like and you've got your tactical modes too if that's something you like. And there we are back at turbo, just a ton of light out of this light and heat's fairly manageable in my hand. 
So the flashlight here has two UI modes. It's got a tactical and an outdoors mode, and the light and ships in tactical by default. I don't run um, my lights really in tactical situations, so I switched it to outdoors mode. Um, tactical mode gives you a half press um, on the primary switch here on the back, which gives you uh, momentary on. If you give it a full click, you get turbo. Then uh, that paddle, it gives you um, strobe. You can use the light, the uh, momentary switch up, or the uh, E switch up front to give you different modes. And being the tactical setting, the light starts off in brightest and then goes down from there. I'll put up a photo of the manual that really does a nice job showing both the tactical and outdoors modes, uh, different modes if you're more interested. In outdoors mode, which I what I've got the light in now, the light starts off in moonlight. If I press the uh, paddle here, it's kind of momentary moonlight, and if I keep pressing, you've got uh, low and it stays on. Now uh, I can continue to use that paddle here and step through the different modes in um, lowest to highest order. I can hit that on off switch and you get, it's a shortcut to turbo. And uh, what's kind of interesting here too then is the paddle and then the E switch up front, they work in reverse. So the paddle builds up from low to high while the E switch will go from high to low. So that's a little bit different way to do it. It's different than any other lights that I've had that I can remember off the top of my head. Um, it almost requires two hands to operate though, especially, or, or shifting your grip a lot. So that's something I'm not a huge fan of, but it's kind of nice to see dedicated buttons to go up and down. If you switch between a lot of lights like I do, that might be a little bit confusing. Uh, but if this is one of your only lights, then I think that'd be a benefit. Claris lists outputs modes at, uh, Turbo at 4,000 lumens, high at 1,200, medium at 400, low at 100, and moonlight at 5. Strobe is rated at 4,000 lumens, SOS at only 100. So as I mentioned before, the light does have micro USB charging underneath this port here on the backside. And for me, that's really quite unfortunate that they didn't go with USB-C on this design in 2019 on a more expensive light. In my opinion, they really should, it, that really should be the standard in this price range for lights. And uh, it is 2019 after all. The good news is charging via micro USB was relatively quick. I saw the light take 3.3 hours from full charge. And most of the time that was at a two amp charging speed. A full cell when we charged inside the light stopped charging at 4.12 volts. So the pros for me are, it's relatively easy to switch between tactical and outdoor modes. Easy enough that you could memorize it if you wanted to. It's got positive retention in the holster uh, with that click in, which I like. It's got true active thermal controls there uh, when power allows. Flashlight DZ does include this little USB uh, key, which is nice to, uh, it's, it's like a little flashlight that plugs into your USB port, kind of nice. And uh, there's less Cree rainbow on the P2 version of this XHP 70.2 than others I've tested. The cons for me are micro USB for recharging. It's 2019 and on a light of this price range, it really should have USB-C. Moonlight mode is brighter than I prefer at five lumens. For me, moonlight mode is one lumen or less. And the light's a little bit large. My conclusion is I like that for a tactical light, Claris gives the option of an outdoors mode that if not being used in a tactical setting, it's better for general use. Most of my lights don't get used in tactical scenarios, so being able to not have the paddle on the switch makes a much more usable light. It's nice to see a 21700 in this light, as well as active thermal controls. I feel like those are appropriate uh, for the price range and the year. But it's too bad we're still stuck on micro USB instead of USB-C for recharging in 2019. Overall, it's a solid tactical light that I wish turbo mode lasted longer. One minute just isn't very long. As always guys, make sure you check the description on where you can find out more about this light and purchase it from Flashlight Z. Thanks again to them for sending it to me. If you're not joined already, make sure you join my Facebook page for the channel here. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well as check out the Patreon page. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next review soon.